This little video is going to go through the process of developing the captive nut joint. So this is a really nice process of being able to attach two pieces of flat board like MDF that then become perpendicular to each other. So we're going to start by uh, developing a piece, putting the, the cut on and, and putting it through there. So we're always going to start with a sketch. I'm going to start just on the, let's say, top plane for this one, to go normal to using N. Now, I'm going to keep it super, super simple, and we're going to just do a rectangle for the piece that we're going to attach. So this could obviously be any type of shape that we're working with. I'm just going to be working with this one here, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a piece of board attached on either side. So I'm going to start with a corner rectangle now. So generally this works best with a finger joint. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab, I might do a finger joint through the middle. So I'm going to be working the example with three millimeter MDF. This will work with six and then make him just 20. Just keep it arbitrary in terms of the size. I'm going to then put a circle in line with the, the middle of that. Three mils because I'm going to be using M3 nuts and then we're going to mirror this across the, the center line here. So I'm going to just start by making this symmetric first. So that one, that one, that one, just for neatness. And then I'm going to mirror that one. So I've got a mirror line there and I'm going to mirror this guy across. So now I've kind of got the setup for two T-joints on this side here. Again, I'm just going to lock this in a little bit further. So I wouldn't usually do this right on the very edge, but three mils in gives you enough purchase and, and control on the side to be able to, to manage that one. And again, just to keep it consistent, I'm going to go in and make that, let's say, 25. So spacing is not crucial. You just want to make sure you don't have them too tight so you don't have you've got the material there. So from here, I'm going to now mirror all of those across the other side. So we're ready to go. So now I've got my top piece done. Shift E will allow me to extrude that. So I'm working with three mil material. New face, this is gonna be my top. And I can then start building out one of the side pieces. So what we're gonna do from here, I'm just going to hide those faces for the moment and I'm going to add in a new sketch in this part studio on one of these sides. So new sketch, I'm going to start on that face. So now you can see if I go normal two, we've got that there. Now it can sometimes be easier to be able to see where, where we're at, but hopefully we remember our dimensions and we can go from there. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to draw in those that first box. I'm going to just create a full box here for my side piece. So he needs to be 80 and I'm just going to go 25 just to, to round it out. Now you can see that's not quite exact at the moment. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make that coincident so he squares up. Now again, this is not crucial, but I want to be able to have it so that my piece, when I cut it out, has this here. Now, those holes is where we need to set up our, our T-nuts. So I might start, because we're going to mirror these, do one and then replicate it. So we're going to start there by going Q and going to the center of that one and mirroring it. So we could do this in the sketch or we could actually do the component. I'll show you both processes here. So now I've got my space here. If I remember, I had that up. So I'm going to use my dimension tool again. And I'm pretty sure I had that up 25. So that was 15 up because I went from the center last time. So if we see that, that's now lined up nicely with that hole. So I've got 
my size ready to go. So what we're going to do is I'm going to use a rectangle. Now this is designed for M of 10 millimeter M3 nuts or 12 millimeter work as well. So if I go three millimeters wide and then if I go 10 deep, that gives 13 mils from this edge through to be able to give space for that nut. So that works quite well. And again, I'm going to make those so that they are symmetrical. So now that's locked in because I had it already on that side and then I need space for the nut. So I'm gonna drop that in here. Now that needs to be 5.4 wide and 2.4 deep. So again, I'm going to make that symmetrical. So those two to the middle, that ties that in. And generally I'll go about four mils in. So then that gives me seven, then the 10 mil nut would go to about there, 12 would go. So if we're using a 12, we could go a bit further, but you don't want this part too close to the edge. So it's got a little bit of material to be able to purchase too. So that's my T-nut. What we'll do there is now mirror that to the bottom um, nice and easily. So I'm going to go mirror from that line, select those pieces, down they go. So that now feature is set up. So shift E to extrude and I'm going to select that face. I don't want to add this time. This is going to be a new one and we'll make that three mils again. So now you can see I've got my piece. Now I forgot to add that one there, so I'm gonna go back into that extrude and include that piece as well. So now I've got my nut will sit in there and the bolt goes through there to be able to hold it in place. And obviously the slot here allows me to uh, orientate it exactly where I want to do. So if you have a longer piece, you probably need to have more um, of the slots or the, the captive nuts to be able to hold it firmly in place. Obviously the benefit of this is we can always then swap out a piece because if we super glue then it's really hard to be able to, to break it apart and change anything out. So really nice for the prototyping process and it's nice and secure as well. So if we wanted to finish that off, so if this was a, a piece we actually had to do, I would then come over to my assembly so I'm not going to duplicate it over here, but I'm going to actually insert those parts in here. So we're going to go to the top and I need two of those. I'm going to uh, actually go in and then you can actually find some standard content here. So I want bolts and screws, slotted head is good. So 10 mil M3, conveniently they're already set. So I'm going to actually Put those in once they're in place because what I want to be able to do before I add those in is get him out of the way and put him in place because at the moment these guys are floating and what we can do when we place those bolts in here is we can actually use the space over here so I'm going to now fasten this mate so I'm going to add this guy there and let's see if I can get the face that I want that there, that looks good. And now we do the other one. So as long as we've got that kind of orientated the same way each time with that little bit, he sits in place. So that looks good. I'm now gonna try and insert those other pieces. So I can go through and sort of choose the ones that we want. DIN is the one that I want. You can see we've got nuts as well, so we'll go in and do that second. But you've got the standard material that we can go through and choose for for some of these basic stuff. So I'm gonna grab these guys. Now what's really cool when we go to insert it is I can choose to put him where he sits. So I'm gonna then choose him to sit on that hole. So he's in place already. Insert next one. There it is, insert last one. Okay, so now that's nicely in place. I'm gonna come over and choose, instead of slotted head screws, I wanna be able to go into my nuts. So this one here, we're going to change from M6, 
and it's not going to let me choose those ones so we're going to jump through and see if we can find our m3s because i don't know which one is the one that we need for the m3s there we go so that one i hope is the right size but i know for our our ones that we have in class these are the ones that we need so i'm going to insert him give him a second and we want him to be able to we're going to start with him are you going to let me put him on that base There he goes. So if we put him there, he seems to be just wherever he wants anyway. So we'll fix him up in a second. I'm just gonna put four in and we can go from there. So I have the four nuts in now and what I need to do is then pop them in place. So. I'm going to try by, I'm going to do a make connector with that face and the center of that one. Is he going to play nicely for me? So what we're going to do now is we're going to add some fasten mates. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use that face to be able to attach to the face in here. So he's going to fix in there and if I then reorientate that axis, he's sitting in there. Now in the this design you can see it's not quite right. So if I wanted to, I could go back into that one and just do an offset so it goes down a little bit so we can see that's going to be our Y axis. So if I change that by let's go kind of minus one, he's gone that way. So if we go down one, it's going to be like point, point 0.3, point 0.2. You can get it so it looks, looks right, but for what we're doing, you can see how they actually operate. So I'm just going to finish putting the rest of these in. I'm going to grab that face and put him over there center of that and flip that so he's in the middle happy days and then last one let's add him and so get that flip him and that's in so now i've got how that would look for us so we'd be able to hold that bolt in place then screw that in Obviously, if we wanted to then laser cut that out, we could do that uh, fairly easily as well by adding a drawing and then including those pieces in. So I'm just going to use that template. I'm going to be changing it anyway. So we can go through and put each of the flat pieces, obviously not the, the nuts or the bolts. So first thing I'm going to do is actually just remove all of that backing. So I've got a blank page. I really should set up a template that's just blank and then I'm going to choose my two parts. Now I want to make sure the scale is always one to one and for this guy I want the right side. There he goes. Insert the next one. Insert again. Choose the top and I'm going to want the top view for that one. There he is. And what you'll notice with this one is we want to turn off those automatic center marks. So show or hide, right click to get this up, and then auto hide center marks. And I'm going to go on him, control C, control V, copy and paste so I get my second part that I've got. So they're all ready to go to be able to export as a DXF to be able to then send to my laser cutter. And we're happy, happy with that. So that gives us the whole process through to be able to get my parts. Now, obviously, if I wanted to change this cells on an angle, I could 
change that piece so it ended up being on an angle. Obviously I'd need to have a look at then the location. I probably wouldn't have that centered. So I could adjust that sketch so it became on an angle and that would then be sitting on the side. So there's a lot of things we could do. I could look at using a slightly smaller screw. So I could probably take this a little bit closer, but not by much, to be able to then get a little bit closer, closer cut, cut through there. But you may then actually flip it in so you'd have one in the middle and a finger joint. So that's something you can explore. Good luck with your captive nut joints.